Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Heroes Chronicles spin-off series for Heroes of Might and Magic 3. In Chapter 3, we venture to the Elemental Plains as the immortal hero Tarnum hangs up his sword for a robe. Alrighty folks, welcome back to Part 3 of Master of the Elements, Scenario 4, Hard Place. Tarnum must now fight the Dungeon Overlords. All heroes will be limited to level 25, but Tarnum and his three best heroes will transfer to the next scenario, along with all of their skills, spells and experience. The Orb of Silk will transfer to all scenarios. Jumping up to impossible difficulty, and really there's only one choice here, and that's Crown of the Supreme Magi. Let's do this. Of all the elemental planes, the plane of Earth felt most like the real world. But Tarnum still struggled with his hatred of magic even as he began to realize that his own power was growing far beyond the wizards in his command. I welcomed our arrival in the elemental plane of Earth, solid ground at last. But like everyone else, the first thing I noticed was a feeling like there was a lead weight tied around my ankles, endlessly pulling me downward. The mages complained of feeling heavier or listless. Soon I noticed they were tiring out quicker, forcing me to make more stops during the day. I think my strength has allowed me to continue when they are near collapse, but even I feel the draining effect of this unseen weight. Wow, this is a crazy start. We got to start with loads of money, start with two match towers. So if we can get some more money, like here, we can absolutely smash out a load of enchanters early on. And probably get a real, um, a real crippling blow against our enemies. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking anyway. Let's see how it plays out. Upgrade these bad boys and let's go. I love that we've got all the spells already. <laughs> Jesus. Flawless victory. Grab ourselves a cheeky lookout tower, see what's crack a lacking. Go east to take Dungeon Town. Okay. Don't mind if I do. Got a town hall there in the meantime. Got Earth Magic already. South to Sodville, northeast to North Town. Alright, I'm calling it now. This mission has all the hallmarks of a speedrun. We've got Dim Door, Fly, a load of enchanters early on, a very powerful hero. I think we could pretty much just beeline to uh, to our enemies and take them out. This is this is feeling speedrun territory. There's only one enemy as well. Okay, that's um. This could be over very quickly, folks. Like very, very quickly. <laughs> it depends what kind of standing army and how strong their heroes are. Oh, there is an underground though. A band of Nagas who dwell in this plain have agreed to join our cause for the sake of the rest of the Nagas who still live in my world. Finally, I have swords in my ranks, and remarkable swordsmen these Nagas are. With a blade in each of their arms, I don't think even I could keep up with their lightning attacks. It cheers my heart to see them go into battle. Okay, there's a base. Lovely. Is 
Is that an enemy base? Or a neutral sod bill? It looks neutral to me. Man of Vortex. Nice artifact. That's huge. I really do want the earth, uh, the Tome of Earth magic. I want my uh, town portal ASAP Rocky. Shut the front door, really. I don't know why I did that. It's pretty pointless, actually. Getting the slow was actually pretty good. And 60. Want to keep them away from my enchanters. Magic doesn't really hurt these guys, so. Nice implosion, that's a good spell. Barris Lars Owl arrived today with a crudely drawn map of the region. The Earth Lord has left some of the dungeon overlords behind to protect his realm while he's away, the Owl said. About all I could determine from the map is that my enemy currently occupies two dungeon towns far to the south. Between us, also to the south, is an unoccupied dungeon town. Another town is located far to the east. Oh, there's an enemy. Hello, goodbye. Actually, these Minotaurs could be quite useful. Oh, there's a... I'm assuming that's one of their bases. Oh, I don't even have, um... Castle yet. Okay. Oh, fire magic, really? Brim. Not what I wanted. Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and grab Mana Vortex. Matey boy go. Uh, down here. Probably to another base of theirs. Let's head them off at the pass.
Damn, nice artifacts. I think. So there are other base must be around here then somewhere. Oh, there it is, I found it. Oh, they're still alive. I realise I probably need to be careful. I want to get the Tome of Earth magic before we end this mission. So I think I'll let them recapture that base. At least I know where they are. Definitely want the Tome of Earth magic. All I need to do is find it. That's about the question though, if they do have any more towns. And there is an underground, so that's also worth bearing in mind. Tunnel. Reach the speed, nice. I've fought these dungeon creatures before, long ago. Since they spend most of their lives beneath the ground in their dark tunnels, they can fight well in the dark. In fact, they prefer it. They often ambush their foes instead of fight them face to face. There is no honour in them. They want only to win. Grab all the gubbins. Before we end this mission, I just need to find the Earth, Tome of Earth magic and then we're... Uh... You can finish this, uh, finish these guys off. There's the Orb of Silt. Still not the Earth, Tome of Earth magic, which I do want. So I need. Not sure quite where that is. Have to do some more. Oh, there it is. Wow, can't believe I didn't see that. <laughs> nice. All right, now we've got um, Town Portal. Regen the old manor, and then we can end this bad boy. The power of Dimdor, plus the fact that the game kind of tells you where your opponents are, um, definitely helps, that's for sure. for uh, grouping up for me. Resurrect who baby. Easy game, boys. Easy. <laughs> nice. Alrighty. Scenario 5. The Secret in the Flames. Tana must defeat the Inferno Town and gain control of the Fire Elementals by flagging all Fire Elemental Generators. Heroes will be limited to level 30, but Tana and his three best heroes will transfer to the next map, carrying over all of their skills, spells and experience. 
So, 8 enchanters or 12 magi, we're going to go with 8 enchanters. Let's do this. Strangest of all the elemental planes was the plane of fire. Brilliant flames covered every inch of the landscape like orange wind-blown grass. But the fire didn't burn. This is where the immortal hero discovered a secret that would later give him an advantage over the elemental lords. I was a little concerned about coming to the plane of fire. Air, water and earth I can understand, but an entire world made of fire? Before we came here I insisted that I go alone. No use sending everyone through the portal only to find that our robes and hair catch fire on the other side. What I found instead was a realm lit by a brilliant orange glow and flames licking at my legs like tall grass. With each breath I sucked in the blistering air, too dry to make me sweat but hot enough to make me want to strip off my robes. As I looked around I saw nothing but pools of bubbling lava, charred mountains and flames. In a way, it was beautiful. I'm actually going to switch these two around. Pandora's box, eh? Be careful when you open a Pandora's box, one of your advisors warns you. Just about anything can be stored within these magical containers, including creatures. Do you want to open it anyway? Yes. Yes, I do. I ain't scared. Already got that. An enemy already. Wow, this is a tiny map. The objective is to flag all the creature dwelling. Wow. Okay. Sure. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> How to break the game with Dimension Door. Lovely. Don't really need experience anymore. have another base somewhere because they're not out yet but they are crippled <laughs> clearly uh... my wizard assistants have warned me about some dangerous artifacts called Pandora's boxes apparently they are strewn all over this realm some hold priceless treasures but these powerful boxes can literally hold anything including an army of fire elementals This is very true. Oops. Okay, there's so red's got a base below us, right? Okay. I has just found it. Yoink. So that other base was basically their main. <laughs> The Ifrit who dwell here among the flames forge the breastplate of brimstone. They are not likely to sell it to you, so do you want to fight them for it instead? Hells yeah I do, it's a hell of an artifact. It actually could be a tricky fight. Let's see. Let's slow them down to start things off. One, two, three, yeah, okay, they can't hit. Perfect. <laughs> wow, he's such a weak hero. <laughs> actually embarrassed for him. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, well that was easy. Red's out. <laughs> oh dear. Lots of Ifrit stand about, dipping the shield of the damned into a shallow pool of lava. They don't seem to be attempting to destroy the artifact, so this must be part of the forging process for this powerful artifact. Do you want to attack the Ifrit once they are done, and claim the shield for yourself? Hells yeah! I'm just glad there's no Ifrit Sultans, otherwise that would be bad. Shit. <laughs> okay, now mistakes were made. Good old fashioned misclick. Barris Lars found two inferno towns to the south. Not only do the elementals guard this realm, but demons do as well. In the past, I have faced few opponents as dangerous as a demon. As cruel as they are crafty, they will tirelessly pursue their goal. In this case, I know they will fight me until every last one of them has been killed, but that doesn't really matter. The elementals are the ones I want to control, and to do that, I must control all the fire elemental conflicts. No small task. Well, you say it's no small task, but we've already smashed uh, red, so this actually should be pretty easy. All we need to do is capture the uh, creature dwellings and we're golden. From out of the flames rise lots of fire elementals, attempting to frighten you off. They must be protecting this Pandora's box for some reason. Do you want to fight them for it? Yes, I do. Wow. Wow. <laughs> nice. That's mega. I like how uh, Dimdor basically just replaces movement. <laughs> Once you've got enough mana, it's just like, uh, I could walk here or I could just teleport. <laughs> a pack of pit lords and lots of demons are gathered here attempting to remove a sword stuck in a cooled pool of lava. If you want to chip the sword from the blackened rock, you must fight the evil creatures. Do you? Yes. Yes, I do. Are we forging Armageddon's blade? Is that, is that what's going on here? I feel like this keeps happening. <laughs> you prepare for the worst as you open this Pandora's box, but nothing pops out to attack, so you poke your head cautiously inside to see what treasure lies within. Eh. Could be better, could be worse. There are many imp caches in this area. I am told that imps like to hoard the treasures they steal, usually gold and mercury. Although imps are weaklings on the battlefield, they do travel in large numbers. There's probably several hundred of the creatures inside those caches, but I wonder how much wealth they guard. The flames dance higher than usual here, curling around each other, almost like an odd ceremony. Then the fire takes shape, arms, legs, a head, suddenly a pack of fire elementals stand before you. This Pandora's box rocks violently back and forth and smoke billows between the cracks. Several of your assistants warn you not to open it, but you don't seem like a coward, do you? Do you open the box? Damn straight. I'm really hoping we find um, a Tome of Fire magic at some point. Whoa, well, there is an underground by the looks of it. At first you think the brilliant blue streaks are lightning, but then they stop in midstream, change direction and flash towards you. They block your path and take shape. Energy elementals, says one of your young assistants. Attack, you shout. I love energy elementals, I think they're so good. When you first touch this box, it nearly burns your fingers. The fiery ground doesn't give off enough heat to cause that, so the heat must be coming from within. Do you want to fight whatever is inside the box? Yes. Wow. You're beginning to get the idea that all of these Pandora's boxes were left on this plane as traps for the greedy. Fire elementals seem to enjoy hiding within them and attack those unfortunates who open them. So do you want to take your chances and open this box? 
Of course. Well, that's a rubbish artifact. We'll get rid of that. I don't want to be limited to level 3 spells. Hey, on nah. I mean, it's situationally good, I guess. I, for one, I'm not a fan. Are you going to take your chances? Yeah, yeah. Loads of money. Ah, teleport. This is probably what I'm looking for. I'm also after the Tome of Fire Magic and all the uh, creature dwellings to flag. So we can end this bad boy. And move swiftly on. Oh, I've got no uh, mana. Well then. Should fix that. I am aware of that um, fire elemental conflict, by the way. I purposely didn't flag that so we don't accidentally end this mission prematurely um, before we find the Tome of Fire Magic. So, yeah, it looks like that's the only one, though. Um, everything else is very much just uh, in the underworld. No telling what's inside, but as you approach, your hair starts to stand on end. Are you sure you want to open it? Of course. Ooh, that's a lot. Should probably do this one ourselves. Right, so mighty <laughs> damage. Oof. I mean, we are sporting 20 attack, which is quite funny. Man, these things just don't stand a chance. Dead before they even get to us with slow. <laughs> Wow. Whale. Enchanters really are busted in this game. Okay, well there's all of Tempestuous Fire. So I'm assuming there's another Pandora's box with um, Tome of Fire Magic in it. Here's Hopen. That's probably the one. Another box sits among the flames. For some reason you sense a great power pulsating from within. Do you want to open the box now? <laughs> oh yeah. Give me my Tome of Fire magic. Oh yeah. You'd love to see it. Eh, whatever. We're pretty much done with this mission anyway. Swap this with the uh, Orb of Silt. Go back to base. That should be all she wrote. Congratulations, your flag flies on the dwelling of every creature. Victory is yours. The magic that binds. Tarnum is in a race against the armies of the elemental laws to find three elementals called the first. All heroes are limited to level 33, but Tarnum and his three best heroes will transfer to the next scenario with all of their spells, skills and experience. Okay, well, we've already got all the spells, so enchanters, let's go. Tarnum discovered that the force used to bind the elements together was magic. So he became one of the first to travel to the plane of magic, where anything was possible. And soon, he was in a race against the minions of the elemental lords to gain the help of the mysterious magic elementals. The elemental plane of magic is not much different in appearance from my own world. It's a lush grassy land with thick forests and fields of flowers. Nothing seemed out of place until I watched an acorn fall from a tree. Before it hit the ground, it sprouted red and blue wings and flew off in the form of a butterfly. That's not all. One mage reported seeing a fox leap 30 feet into the top of a tree to catch a sparrow. And the gremlins swear their morning porridge tasted like maple syrup. So far, there have been no ill effects. But I'm afraid half my army is going to turn into pumpkins in the middle of battle. <laughs> now that would be a sight to see. Can you imagine? 
To be fair, if that did happen, at least it might give the enemy a uh, <laughs> a fighting chance to actually beat us. Since we are clearly way overpowered in this game. Oh, I don't keep my spells. Oh, interesting. That's unfortunate. Ah, okay. Well then. That changes everything. I guess I assume those tomes would follow me for all the missions. Guess not. To be fair, that does kind of balance the game a little bit more because we were pretty much unstoppable. <laughs> does mean I need to learn spells again though, which is rather unfortunate. The psychic elemental who came to us as an ambassador for his people explained that the magic elementals known as the first are hiding in a grove waiting for someone to find them. Unfortunately if I do not reach them before the armies of the elemental lords the magic elementals may be forced to join my enemy instead. I was given a clue though, the way to the magic elementals is beyond the gates in the north but first I must find the key master tents in order to gain passage. Ah oh, hell no. Nah. All right, let's uh, slow everything up. Take out the Naga Queens first as they're the big threats. And then we'll just pick them off one by one. Easy pickings. See, now we've taken out the, uh, the troops behind us, we can just move away from the enemy. I was having breakfast trying to ignore the pixies as they flitted through the air above the camp, giggling and shrieking as they played some childish game. One of them dropped low to avoid being tagged by one of the others and the pixie's foot knocked over my bowl of oatmeal. My angry shout put an end to the game. I stood, scraping heavy globs of my morning meal from my robe. Blasted pixies, I yelled. Find somewhere else to play or by the ancestors I'm going to blow off your wings with a lightning bolt. The pixies fled as I strolled back to my tent to change my clothes. For some reason, Hemeros followed me into my tent. The moment I saw his gloating smile, I wanted to slap him. What is it? I barked. My, you have changed since you first took command, Hemeros said. Your beard is neatly trimmed and I heard you took a bath this morning. Now you're fussing over a dirty robe. I stared at myself, realizing to my shame that Hemeros was right. I had become one of them. I was a wizard. If not for my size, a stranger would never suspect that I used to be a barbarian. I tore off the stained robe and threw it at the mage instructor. Do something useful and have that cleaned, I snapped. Hemeros laughed as he exited the tent, too pleased with his own victory to be insulted. Okay, 
Okay, so Teal's a Velvet, so we can deal with that in a sec. Oh, we're actually against all four elements. Okay, good to know. You've come upon a fight between the Necromancer and a Paladin. The Necromancer blasts the Paladin with a firebolt, bringing him to his knees. Acting quickly, you slay the evil one before the final blow. The Grateful Paladin gives you the armour that saved him. So if I saw our dim door, this, uh, this mission would be over by now. <laughs> Now we know where they are, it's like, okay. That being said, I think I know the real reason why they took the tomes away, and that's because this uh, particular mission has key mass attempts on it, and uh, Dimdor would absolutely just break that. So I think that's the real reason they took the uh, tomes away from me. Rip. Oof, really? Okay, let's see if we can change that um, outcome. That's a fair army. Oof. Ah, that's, um, okay, I'm glad they went for the gremlins and not the enchanters. They don't have enough troops to chain lightning, so we can take down the sprites first. I think we just surround the enchanter. Ah, okay, he keeps going for gremlins, that's great. <laughs> yeah, that could have been a lot, lot worse. I mean, it's not an amazing trade, but considering the alternative, I'll take that. And that should be the end of green, which is air. And then we'll just systematically take them out one by one. It looks like there's a key mass attempt within each of these um, opponent's bases, so we kind of need to kill them anyway to gain access to the magic elementals. So two birds, one stone and all that jazz. That is the plan. Meanwhile, we'll work towards a capital. Nice, yep, take that. Grab all the money. A few days ago, Baroslar departed to study and explore this odd realm. I doubt I could have forced him to stay even if I chained him to one of the golems. Well, he's proven useful in the past, so I've asked him to keep an eye on the armies of the Elemental Lords for me. Okay, well, Green's basically dead, so uh, we, can, uh, we can kill him next turn and then move swiftly on. Start wrapping this game up. Go north one step to learn the magic mirror spell from the Oracle of Air. Her services cost 200 gold each time you visit her. Interesting. I am the Oracle of Air and for paying tribute to me I will teach you the spell, magic mirror. I mean, that's a pretty good price. Not a great spell, but I'll take it anyway. <laughs> I 
The green's out. I mean, of all the air spells, Magic Mirror is probably one of the weaker ones. Need to keep an eye out for those little signposts then. Okay, same stuff we already know. Cool. Ah, there's the uh, elementals. Sure, why not? Ah, oh, interesting. Don't mind if I do. Then put their stuff on Solmaya. That's Solmaya. There it is. Paris Lars Owl arrived this morning. I guess even a barbarian can get used to magical things such as talking owls if he's been exposed to it long enough. As the owl began its report, I leaned back and listened as if I were talking to a normal messenger. Luck is with us, Lord Tarnum, the owl said in Paris Lars' nasal voice. These elementals hate each other almost as much as they hate us. They fight with each other. They think that if one of them reaches the magic elementals first, they'll be able to destroy the other elementals, as well as our own world. I hadn't expected good news this morning. My enemy would be easier to deal with as long as they weren't unified. Oh, I realise um, Inferno probably would have been a better adoption, actually. Never mind. Wow, that did way less damage than it should have done. Oh, I'll keep doing that. I don't know why I keep doing that. <laughs> oh. I knew it was obviously going to show me just the same stuff I already know.
right. Two down, for the most part. Today I found a small well by the side of the road. Deciding I could use all the luck I could get, I approached and dropped a coin inside. A second later I was hit in the head by something. I rubbed the sore spot on the top of my skull, bent down to pick up the object that hit me, and discovered it was the coin I'd just dropped into the well. I glanced up at the sky just in time to see a dark cloud of something descending upon me. I jumped out of the way as hundreds of gold fell on the ground in the spot I had just been standing. Amazed by this phenomenon, many of the other wizards tried throwing their own coins inside the well, but nothing happened. Yeah, well, not all uh, wizards are immortal heroes, are they? So... Now, red and tan is the best way to get to them. The only way I can really go is uh, across the top there. Seal's gone. Remus brought me a report this morning from the troops we left in the Plain of Fire to control the territory we conquered. They have learned that the Lord of Fire has enslaved the Great Phoenixes and forces them to fight for him, or else he'll destroy the places where the Phoenixes have been born since the beginning of time. As I read this report, I clenched my fist around my staff. The elemental lords were no different than the wizards who once enslaved my people. To make matters worse, I sat here looking and acting exactly like the bottom feeders who nearly destroyed my people. It's a very linear mission in terms of us taking a very exact path and okay, we haven't done okay this is where we need to go though once we have grabbed all the stuff good to know i called a meeting of my top advisors this morning the gremlins brought a table out into the middle of camp usually these meetings were held in private much of what a wizard does is in secrecy, and I was determined to hold on to at least a small portion of my real identity. I could tell the wizards were uncomfortable as a crowd of gremlins and mages gathered. We have a more urgent matter to deal with, I said sternly. We must abandon our search for the magic elementals. But why? Hemeros said. Because I say so. Because the phoenixes are trapped on the plane of fire, slaves to the fire lord. As long as I live, I will not allow any creature to be slave to another. The mages muttered to each other while some of my advisors protested all at once. Calmly, Remus stood and said, 
Lord Tarnum, if we pull back from the plane of magic now, the magic elementals will be forced to join one of the elemental lords. Then we'll be at a disadvantage. I glared at Remus and the others. Of course they didn't care about the enslaved phoenixes. They are the descendants of the same wizards who enslaved the barbarians. I will not abandon the phoenixes. I'm not asking that, Lord Tarnum. Only that we finish what we do here first. No. I am the commander here. In a few days, I want to know how long it will take us to return to the Plane of Fire. Well, it looks to me like uh, Lord Tarnum is creating a bit of a divide among his mages. <laughs> that, could be, uh, that could be a problem, potentially. Well, uh, kind of curious to see how that all plays out, because that's... Um, yeah, that's a good way of dividing your troops. Interesting. Very interesting. Like, obviously, from his perspective, I totally get it. Like, you'd absolutely want to deal with that. Wow, 1.3k damage. Jesus. That's pretty insane. When we're chain lightning at this point is it's just as likely to do damage to me as it is to them. Luckily our army's actually pretty good, so. I'm slow OP. <laughs> I guess at this point it's worth actually uh, joining those enchanters up. Unfortunately they're kind of at the point where they're just too small number to do significant damage anymore. Which is rather unfortunate. But it is what it is. We should probably see what spell we get down here as well. I heard the shout soon after I retired to my tent for the night, and among the angry words I called my name, so I slipped out the rear of my tent and raced among the shadows toward the source of the commotion. Remus's tent. Filthy, thuggish lout, said Hemeros. Watch your voice, Remus said. I don't care any longer. He's a brute, not a real wizard. What was King Magnus thinking making him our leader? Magnus must have had his reasons. You weren't with us then, Remus. He's a thug. Wouldn't even let us build a mage guild for the longest time. And I swear he was afraid of magic, like some stupid barbarian. You're being foolish now, Hemeros. He's as powerful as a wizard as I've ever met, Remus said. I could tell the man was attempting to calm Hemeros down. Just look at him, he's no wizard. He's as big as any barbarian, and I've heard him praise of the ancestors. Those are the gods of the barbarians, I've looked it up. And now he wants to leave the plane of magic and save some silly phoenixes. This hypocrite. Barbarians are the biggest slavers around. I had heard enough. I could see Hammeros' shadow pacing on the other side of the tent cloth, so I punched my hand straight through and grabbed the man by his collar. Hammeros squealed as I dragged him through the torn tent and threw him on the ground. I wanted to smash his skull in, but I just stared at the man cowering at my feet. I swallowed my anger and stormed off without another word. I could tell by the expression on everyone's faces that they all knew just how close Hemros came to dying. Man, Hemros is literally playing with fire. Tarnum has killed for less. Much less. Curious to see how that plays out. Fire shield... South. Oh wow, hell yeah. That was a nice and unexpected surprise. Take that. 24 as well. Oof. That is significant. This morning before any of my advisors woke, I placed a table in the middle of camp and waited. Soon a crowd gathered around the table, 
all knew this was going to be an important meeting. I wasn't a fool. I knew now that my decision to return to the Plane of Fire and save the Phoenixes had divided my forces. Some, such as the Gremlins and Genie, sided with me, but the Mages wanted to stay here in the Plane of Magic. The word spread quickly through camp, and soon my advisors poured from their tents and sat down at the table. I noticed that Hemros wouldn't meet my gaze, and Remus looked concerned. Everyone knows I want to return to the Plane of Fire. My decision has caused some problems here in camp. I want to know if your resistance to save the Phoenixes is a selfish desire to study this Plane of Magic, or some other motivation, I said. The others looked at their hands, the table, anything but my stern face. Only Remus was brave enough to speak. It's a matter of urgency, Lord Darnum. We know we need the help of the Magic Elementals to defeat the Elemental Lords. The Magic Elementals will be available to us for a limited time. However, the Phoenixes will still be the prisoners of the Fire Lord, Remus said. I couldn't argue with his logic, which only upset me more. Since when did I start letting logic rule my decisions? So, Remus, you want to let the Phoenixes suffer more while we hunt for the Magic Elementals, is that right? To save the world, yes, Remus said. I found myself agreeing with the man despite myself, but I was still too angry to leave without striking a few blows of my own. Very well, we'll let the Phoenixes suffer their enslavement for a while longer, I said. How easily wizards accept enslavement? Not much has changed since the time of Barakadun, when he tried to destroy the barbarian people. Did you find real slaves too unpredictable? Is that why you create these mindless golems? I got up from the table before anyone could answer. Alright, Frenzy. Okay. Cool. Ninety seven, Jesus. <laughs> oh dear. There's a rookie mistake from them. Hmm, Red's trying to make a runner for it. I think not, sir. Or he's actually going to make me chase him. God damn. This is uh, painful. You know what? Crack on, mate. I'll be able to defend my own lands anyway. I've been getting dirty looks from the student mages whenever they thought I wasn't looking. Until now I never cared if these magic users liked me, but I was going to have a major problem if they ceased obeying me, especially during combat. I needed to rely on them as they needed to rely on me. Normally I would bring such a problem up to the mage instructor Hemeros, but lately I've gotten the idea he doesn't want to talk to me. It seems that even though I've decided to remain here in the plane of magic, I've made some enemies. the south. Expensive fight, slow. Hmm. 
Yeah, well, I suppose I got chain lightning. Ah, chain lightning doesn't affect them. Interesting. Inferno, it is. Useful. So much mana. Oh, I didn't make it. I really thought he was going to make it. <laughs> oh, one last problem to deal with. What did you just run off to? to deal with this guy. Jesus. Sorrow. Yikes. Not the best of spells. The camp is filled with whispers each night, except when I'm around. That's when everyone becomes deathly quiet as if I was the one they had been talking about. I'm convinced something is going on, and I'm afraid this is the sort of conspiracy that usually ends in death. Last night after dinner, I returned to my tent because no one seemed in the mood to talk. I wasn't about to sit around and do nothing about the secrets flying through my camp, but I couldn't strong arm the men into talking. These wizards already disliked my tactics, so I resorted to magic. I've had control over air magic for some time now, so it was easy for me to make the air around the camp thinner. Then I grabbed the vibrations of even the softest sound and directed them towards my own ear. Suddenly I was able to hear the conversations of every person in camp as if they were standing right next to me. First I found Remus mumbling to himself about elemental magic. He was alone, so I searched out another familiar voice. I smiled. Sometimes magic had its uses. I'm not so sure that's wise, said Ponifik hesitantly. I mean, he's managed to get us this far, hasn't he? Fool. He doesn't care about a single one of us. He's leaning us all to our deaths, I tell you. Listen to his own words. He despises wizards. He's a barbarian spy, I say. I was certain this last voice belonged to Hemeros, the mage instructor. Don't be silly. He's the best wizard I've seen. Maybe even as good as Gavin Magnus. No barbarian spy could do that. Look at him. He said so much himself. He hates wizard. You'll see and you'll be sorry. Most of the other whispered conversations in camp were about me. 
Nearly everyone suspected that I was a barbarian spy determined to bring about the downfall of King Magnus. Some even claimed I got us lost on the elemental planes on purpose. I ended my spell and took a drink of wine. I hadn't realised it had gotten this bad. Conclusion I've already got. I want Town Portal. Ooh, Resurrection, yeah. I also want that one. Lovely jovely. Why can't I do that? I've got, got enough crystal, interestingly. Oh, there she blows. Hello, beautiful. I can't take that one away from me now. Okay, well, if all I get is... um. Town portal, I'm happy with that. Inferno Armageddon, not bad, not bad at all. This morning Hemeros made his move. Before we had chance to have a bite to eat, he stood up and demanded everyone's attention. I believe we should have a change in command, he said. And I think we will all agree that Remus is the likely choice, since Barisla is not present. I immediately looked at Remus, who had nearly choked on his tea. At least Remus wasn't in on this. So Hemeros was the instigator, but how much support did he have? I had to know. Coming to my feet, I said, You do realise, Hemeros, this is not a democracy. I'm not going to take a vote. We don't want you as our leader anymore. We want someone who is going to get us home safely. If need be, we can remove you of your command. Oh really? And who exactly is going to do that? Hemros looked around at the faces of the wizards gathered here. Several were prepared to help him, but the others seemed uncertain. So Hemros, what are you going to do if I refuse to step down? How far are you willing to go? I had to know, but a familiar sharp voice said, Hold on. It was Barisla, returning from the wild as I had asked. I just hoped it wasn't a mistake. Barisla and I had never been on good terms, but at least it seemed we shared the same goal. He would have to realise that Hemeros' actions would hurt our chances of defeating the Elemental Lords. Sit down, Hemeros, and stop this foolishness, Barisla ordered. He assumed the role of the King's cousin, even though he was dressed in dirty plain robes. None of us would still be alive if not for the leadership of this man, of Lord Tarnum. I happen to know the King Magnus wanted Tarnum to lead this quest because Tarnum is skilled both in the tactics of war and magic. He's our best chance at defeating the Elemental Lords. I was surprised by Barislar's passionate defence. He pretended that it had been the idea of Gavin Magnus to make me leader all along and that they should trust their King's wisdom. And King Magnus will certainly learn about the Pitiful way some of you have behaved, Barislar said, staring directly at Hemeros. Finally, the mage instructor sat down. Okay, well we're getting some good spells at least. Can't argue with that. Three and three. Okay, prayer and clone, also good spells. Okay. 
Okay, so now we need to go to Electrizing. Time to end this mission. Perhaps I am partially to blame for what happened this morning. I treated Hemeros and the others poorly when I first became their commander. Apparently he never forgave me, nor did he forgive Barislav for supporting me when Hemeros tried to take over. That's why Hemeros attacked Barislav. The mage instructor called Barislav from his tent and challenged him to a wizard's duel. I heard this and stormed out just in time to see Hemeros throw a crackling lightning bolt at Barislav, who stood his ground. The bolt never hit him, but deflected off an invisible shield and struck the ground instead. I've learned a few things while exploring the plane of magic, Barislav said. That's when I noticed a few of Hemeros' students sneaking around behind Barislav. They raised their hands to cast a spell, so I jumped into the duel. Back to back, Barislav and I faced the traitors. I cast Frost Ring, followed immediately by a fireball. The mages never had a chance. Behind me, Barislav and Hemeros exchanged lightning bolts. Hemros must have realised he was no match for either of us, so he began to retreat. I cast slow on the man so he couldn't get away, and then it was over. I yield, Hemros shouted. Barislav collapsed onto one knee, clutching a shoulder that still smoked from where he was struck by one of the lightning bolts. Healer, I called, and then approached the mage instructor. To Hemros, I said, not too bad for a barbarian, eh? <laughs> Cheeky, I like it. Freebies, okay. Don't mind if I diddly do. Soon, I am told, we will find the magic elementals and we will be able to return to the plane of fire to free the phoenixes. But I wonder if my army will be able to hold together for that long. What about afterward? I suspect that many of the mages hate me because I keep Hemeros locked in a cage with iron golems as guards. Hemeros caused a lot of damage before he tried to kill Barislav. His words planted seeds of doubt in the minds of my men. That could prove fatal for us all. Should probably just see if I can get some uh, top tier spells. The only one I really want is um, Dimension Door. Ah, it's just not going to happen, is it? Wishful thinking on my part. We are the Elders, the first. Unlike the Psychic Elementals, these three Magic Elementals actually speak. We know why you have come. The Elemental Lords desire destruction, always have. What they don't realise is that the Universe wants to bring the Elementals together in harmony. Yes, we will join your battle. This madness must be stopped. Okay, 
Congratulations, you have over three magic elementals in your armies. Your enemies have no choice but to bow down before your power.